Hey, everybody, this is Sheets, and I have uh, two special guests today. We have Michael Baychuk again. We've had him on here before. We also, if you want to go back, I did a full, like, hour and a half with him, like, last year, where we spent about an hour and 20 minutes going over all New Orleans Fairgrounds uh, stories and then another 10 minutes going over the card, I think. But it was uh, – that that was that was a lot of fun. And I have uh, the, the, the ultra legend, Steve Rubenfair, uh, on. He – Steve, I've referred to him like several different times over the years. I mean, Steve, Steve and I have known each other back since California, back like 20, 25 years ago, maybe more. And he and I have been partners in, in pick sixes and in horses for about, for a long time, like 20, 25 years. He's literally the only person on the face of the earth that I would trust to like bet horses for me. You know, literally the only one. And, and he's really just like super sharp. He's done like a lot of things in his life. And he's currently involved in another project, which we also have a video about that, I'm involved in called Better Takes that is more of a sports betting app that um, does a lot of things, including uh, analyzes uh, uh, betters' histories and and shows what their biases are. It's, it's, it's a really fascinating project that will update you on whatever. Just this morning, I said, you know, Steve, why don't you, why don't you come on with us? Um, and he said, and he said, sure. So uh, just to kind of like flex a little bit, you know, just just to remind everybody. So Mike is is kind of famous for for taking down, if not the biggest, at least one of, I suppose, uh, handicapping contests ever. He took down like a million dollars in the in the national handicapping contest about 10 years ago, which is which is uh which is obviously like really good. And, and to flex a little bit, so we're talking about Breeders' Cup, I pr I'm pretty sure that Steve and I took down, if not the biggest pick six in Breeders' Cup history, it's gotta be freaking close. Let's put it that way, when we yeah. took down Invasor back in two thousand and whatever that was. Um, so we got, we got a couple of guys that, that can flex about stuff that happened a long time ago, which is good. Um, and, uh, we're going to, we're going to go over the Breeders' Cup uh, card today. We're going to do the Friday and the Saturday. And, you know, Mike's going to be feel maybe a little tag team today because, because what, what Steve and I both share is we kind of use the sheets and numbers to, to handicap. We basically don't know anything about horses or horse racing, but we know how to like read sheets and, and, and analyze. And Mike. He's been, you know, writing about horses forever. He knows literally everything about horse racing and horses. So he takes it. And even though he knows how to read the sheets and he does that, and he kind of showed that and it, very surprisingly when we did the last video, I wasn't expecting him to, to flex that knowledge uh, that last time. But but although he knows how to, does that, to do that, he combines everything together. Like he knows about horses and like pace and other like kind of traditional, like reading the racing form type of stuff. And he knows a little bit more about the trainers than we do and all that kind of good stuff. So hopefully between all of us, we'll, we'll give you guys something, something to work with. A couple of kind of caveats before I get into this. Remember, we're recording this on Thursday um, and we're going to go over Friday and Saturday's card. And we're going to do our best to estimate what we think is going to be good value. But remember that, that, you, that, you know, the odds can change. And Mike, you might have disappeared. No, there you are. Um, odds can change and value can change. And unlike, you know, uh, some things that, you know, you have to bet early, there's literally no reason ever to bet something before like one minute to post, you know. Uh, so make sure that you, when you take our advice, like if we say that something we think is going to be really good, it's 10 to 1 morning line. If it goes off at 8 to 5, probably you're not going to want to bet it. OK, so so, you know, that's the danger of doing content like this is that you run the risk of people saying, oh my God, you gave me this horse and I bet you lost. Yeah, but I wouldn't have given it to it six to five. So we're going to do our best to go over that. The, the other thing that I want to talk about the Breeders' Cup in general, one of the reasons I have no problem doing this with the Breeders' Cup is it's one of the few days where no matter how many people watch this video, you're not going to be able to affect our price like at all. Okay, because <laughs> like so much money that's in the pool. The other thing that I think is really cool about the Breeders' Cup, especially from, from the, uh, the sheets angle, is that you have all these shippers coming from all over the country. And one thing that's kind of cool about the way, the way sheet reading works is those types of things kind of travel. In other words, what sheets do is they kind of normalize the horses coming from other tracks so you can be able to compare them one to the other, which is really, really neat. You know, you, you're not fighting that battle where you're, you're betting a regular Gulfstream card where half the people at Gulfstream know like which trainers are live and which which guys have the good drugs now and what part of the track is good. Everybody's kind of come together and nobody knows how to compare an Arkansas race to a to a to a Keeneland race to a Belmont race. And what sheets do is kind of like normalize that for you. So we have that edge and the fact that it's the Breeders' Cup and you have all this public money in. So all I can promise you guys is this. 
we will give you incredible good EV in the long run. And you'll probably have to live 300, 300 years to get to the long run. But hopefully the way the distribution curve works, we'll, we'll get there. So what we're going to do is we're going to go through the all the races that are in the Breeders' Cup uh, on both days. And what I'll do is I'll probably just kind of like start by, I'll either start or then I'll, or sometimes we'll alternate and we'll just kind of get through it. We're, we'll, we'll get through all of it in an hour um, and uh, hopefully it works out. So we're going to start, I'm going to share my screen. And we're going to start with the uh, this fancy dancy program here um, with the juvenile turf sprint. Um, so I, I guess I'll start with this one. And, and there are going to be some races where I'm going to say that's a terrible batting race and just I don't like anything or whatever it is. Um, and should be more races than I would like to say. But so in this first race, the way I have this, I, I have Speedboat as probably a slight edge um, overall. Um I have, uh, what's the Tyler horse? Um, uh, so the Tyler, Tyler horse, tribe. the Tyler tribe is the one that hasn't been on the turf yet. He's the one that's kind of annoying to me because he has such a good line that if in fact he were on the turf, um, I would really just like, if you somehow can take to the turf, 15 to one is going to look really, really good. The two horse I kind of want to highlight is first of all, platinum, I think is kind of bad chalk. Um, I would probably avoid that. But to me, probably the best overall value at big odds in this race is probably the one lady Hollywood. And again, I can't turn this into a, a whole sheets lecture on how to read the sheets. This is just this is my my net result uh, analysis. Why don't why don't we go to Steve first? And Steve and I really haven't discussed these races yet. Why don't we go to Steve's first and tell me what he thinks about relative that relative value in this race or whatever it is? And then we'll go to Mike. Yeah, I mean, I'm going to say the same thing. This is a tough race. We, I wouldn't be surprised if anybody won. These two-year-old races are very hard to separate. These are races, reading the sheets, we don't feel like we have a great advantage. We never like, these aren't big races. These are annoying races for us. And we're especially very grateful they're not in the pick six today. So, um, yeah, I mean, Speedboat is a little better, but um, I, I feel like the same thing, that uh, the, the value is probably Lady Hollywood, but you can make a case for any long shot in this race. Uh, this American Apple at 21, um, there's a whole bunch you could use in this race. Platinum Queen, I think, is fine. Speedboat, the prices aren't great. So I, I wouldn't really have a strong, I don't really have a strong opinion in this race, except it's a good race to uh, use a lot of horses and try to get a long shot. What do you got there, Mike? So I, I just, I, I do kind of have a strong opinion here. I'll say this. This is the one race on the turf that no, no, no European has ever won. So that's a pretty strong bias, you know, after 20 something years, no European horse has ever won the sprint. Um, well, I'm not sure they've run this every year, but so you, you almost have to throw them all out and that's good this year because you're gonna have horses that are that are gonna take a little money like Mischief Magic and Platinum Queen. I, I may just, I mean, I may have a different opinion here. I think Love Reigns is a very, very strong favorite. Um, Wesley Ward, the trainer, is firing on all cylinders right now. And sometimes his barn, when it gets really hot, it just for, throw out the form and just get, just ride that wave. So, you know, if I'm playing multi, multi wagers, I'm going to probably be singling Love Reigns. And I do think the value, though, is the one Lady Hollywood to, to clunk up for second or third because she's been around two turns. She's one of the few that's been around two turns from the Europeans, they normally run their sprints in a straightaway. Um, and so she'll have a closing kick, but, but I just, it's hard for me to get past love reigns. I don't know what she looks like on the, on the sheets. Um, but I know what she looked like when in her last race and she's off a little bit of a layoff, but this is just the perfect setup for, for a Wesley Ward trained uh, horse uh, turf sprint. So Mike, I'll tell you how old I am. I mean, you're probably at the same age. I'll, I'll date myself a little bit. I, I bet on Wesley Ward as a bug boy jockey at the metal. <laughs> <laughs> he was carrying, he was carrying 108 pounds. Yeah. Um, I think, I think he made the right career switch from, yeah, from uh, jockey to trainer. All right. So moving on to the, so basically we're all kind of in agreement. It's well, I mean, I think it's kind of a crappy betting race in general, uh, just, just because two-year-olds, at least for me, are just always kind of tough. So uh, speaking of which uh, race seven, I will make my life much easier and say that um that the favorite uh, chocolate gelato, I guess, is sort of the most likely winner, but I have no business or no interest betting this race at all. What, what do you think, Steve? I think it's a toss. I think that it's just way too I short. Sure. And I think um, I think chocolate gelato is just a flat out toss. I mean, in the pick six, you'd have to use it. But I think as far as betting the race, I think just toss it. It just 
I think though there's a it's a it's a wide open race and you can make a case for a lot of horses, but I think there's some great long shots. The um two, you're my girl, the eight atomically, or what is it? Yeah, atomically, the uh, eleven American Rocket, and the thirteen, um, maybe especially that one, leave no trace. I think looks great. Um, there's a bunch of middling horse. I mean, there's a lot you could use. Chop, chop, one reveal, the mid favorites. You know, it, it's kind of, uh, it's just a really open race. And there's just a handful of long shots that I think look like they could pop. And so I, I don't have a strong opinion on this race, but I think those uh, those four long shots are, or yeah, four of them are pretty good. And I would just uh, screw around with those guys. What do you like, Mike? Anything? Yeah, I think I'm landing the same where I, I wrote down, I don't like the favorite either favorite chop chop or um chocolate gelato i think that grand love um the asmussen on the outside is a live long shot here um i believe that you know she's going to be able to get the lead or at least rate right off and that's going to be favorable at keeneland and this horse could possibly be 20 25 to 1 the other two that i like is two that um steve mentioned were atomically and also um what was the uh you're you're my girl so i i'm you know i'm not a player if i'm playing pick six or pick five i'm not including gelato i'm throwing that horse completely out just because i want to be different i want to get a different ticket and if i hit it i want it to pay and not have the same ticket so if i'm playing pick fives and i'm sure i will um gelato is off of my ticket 100 percent. okay moving on to race eight um Again, it's not going to always be like this, uh, but uh, I, I'm just going to start, and I and I, and I just got I, I just have nothing here. I mean, I I, I wrote down <laughs> all no three eleven. That that's literally all I wrote down. I couldn't find a single other thing to what like. What do you have against the three? Nothing, I guess. Um, <laughs> uh, so I guess we should all single the three, pretty much. I guess that's the uh, that's the lesson to be learned. Um, what what I'll, I'll 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 go to Steve first. Steve, what do you, you like anything here? I mean, no, you know, it's the same, it's a wheel, but there's good value. I mean, the, you know, the 12 midnight mile at 10 to one, this is a horse, this is a, you know, I think this is the kind of race, like the last one, you want to toss the favorite and just screw around a little bit. I don't have a serious stance here. That horse, the, um, the one Comanche, Comanche country at 15, the two Cairo consort at 12, the five pleasant packet, pleasant package at 12, spirit gal at 20 to one. That's actually a great one. If they draw in 14, Basil Martini at 15, the outside, Alluring Angel at 20. Um, this is an open race. And so, you know, get rid of these favorites and just screw them out the long shots. And it's the Breeders' Cup. So you can actually not affect the odds and do a, you know. So that's what I would do. I would just take a bunch of favorite, I mean, a bunch of long shots and box them. And, but no, uh, no, no, like it's the same opinion as you, Eric. I don't really, they're all the same. So just toss the favorites and box the best long shots. What do you got, Mike? So I agree. I mean, I think it's um, it's a wide open race. I would t I'm going to tend to favor the Europeans here um, just because they've won this race uh, before, and and they they just seem to you know show up more in this race than on the turf and in, in other races. Um, I'm going to go with Midnight Mile. I think we're going to get a good price. Anything over, I would say six to one would be playable. So to your point, Sheets, you know, if, if this horse shows up and it's seven to two, I'm not as interested, not interested at all. But if he's, you know, six to one plus, that that's a very that's a very clever price. And then the other I really think is um, going to be long, even though it's eight to one morning line, is just uh, Jagera, the 13. Not happy about the post. The last race was a gimme on the dirt. This horse is much, much better on the turf. Uh, gets Le Peru back today and should get the perfect trip because there's not a lot of speed, but should be able to sit right off and cut over. Um, that horse is going to be a key. So, you know, I'm going outside 12, Looks 13. Great in the sheets. Yeah. Good. Great. I mean, I think he's going to, she's going to probably, I think this horse is 15 to one minimum and eight to one is not a good uh, morning line price. You, so. you know, go I, I would put her in my thing. If it was any, if it was 12 to one instead of eight to one, I would have, I would have set her. So, so this whole thing, yeah, it really depends on the actual odds. Like everything does, huh? Yep. Yeah, right. I mean, if she's like, again, if she's five to one, I'm done. I mean, I'm not, I'm not interested, but you know, I'll play her like again in a pick four or pick five, but, but not, you know, as if I'm betting to win, uh, I'm not betting her five to one or four to one. You know, before we go on, I wanted to let you guys know, I mean, the way I kind of eventually became kind of a sheep player, 
before before that i you know i i, I did the, the normal stuff like read the racing form and then i was one of those guys that had vi that watched all the videos and all the replays of every race like every race and i had like these red this red spiral notebooks of notes <laughs> of every horse you know like and the every and i watched double replays triple replay and then this before internet tv or whatever they had like a replay booth at like the track that you'd have to go and like watch the replays and stuff. And when I would actually watch the races or whatever, and then what's interesting is that once I got into reading the sheets, what I, what I was really just kind of humming was when I was just kind of combining those, those disciplines together, you know, like if I, if I was between two horses that both look good on the sheets, but one of them had kind of a good trip note, that would be good to break ties. Now, again, now I'm like, I'm lazy and retired. I, I can't, I can't. <laughs> I don't, I don't watch any, I don't watch any races anymore. I know, know it's funny because we're listening to, you know, when, when we're, I, mean, I don't know if you feel the same way, but listening to Michael talk, he just sounds crazy to us. Right. It just sounds like insane stuff. Right. You know what? It, 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 it's only, it doesn't sound insane only because I, it's, it's, uh, I, I've, um, I've been, I've been there. Um, I mean, he's, and, yeah, he, you, you used to use this stuff more. Yeah. And Michael's won the, the contest, won a million dollar contest. So yeah. I can't fault it at all. Yeah. But when you're saying things like a European has never won this race, I'm like, what difference could that make to this race? Like, so what if the European has never won this race? Like, how could that, <laughs> and, and now let me ask you this to just, just to be just for, just for fun, Mike. So when you yeah. say this race, does that mean like this race, it, it does mean because it's this track or no, no, because no, of this, this distance? Or yeah, yeah. the, the Breeders, Cup sprint. Breeders Cup turf sprint for two juveniles, he means. He means Correct. that. And there, may, and, there, and there may have only been like, uh, I don't They just, they, they probably just started running it like 10 years ago. Well, that, that, but about but, that. I mean, it's possible. Like, it could be a way they train right. Europeans, and there, there could be a reason they don't win the race. You know, it could be because of whatever. It's totally possible. But yeah, so it's something like that. There's just something inherent. But, but I will, I will say this is that even like the sheets, like kind of adapt to stuff that the sheets usually didn't consider. Like it was only in the last what ten years they start putting pace numbers in, right? When when they, when don't they have some sort of? Um, haven't they started using? Uh, I don't use them anymore. Um, that's a whole nother hour long subject. They haven't, but, whatever you're um, going to say, no, they haven't started using anything in the last. I, I thought they put some trip notes in there, just like a couple. Yeah. Something that's like a long you time. Know, that's twenty twenty. That's been years. that's been yeah. okay, okay. But what I but what I mean is when there's a particularly slow pace, they will make a note of that um, right. in the sheets now, where they never used to do that. Um, I don't know how to. I don't. I don't. Yeah. I don't know how to use it. Um, um, oh. Yeah. I mean, look, it's different disciplines. I stopped using the sheets because I thought it was too it, on a daily basis, which I don't even play anymore. But I thought too many. It was you weren't getting any value on horses that we used to teach you. And I've talked about this, you know, horses like five years ago, six years ago, that maybe, you know, four to one, five to one, a sheet horse, that looks a great pattern, you know, looks great. You're going to get, you know, nine to five, eight to five these days. Well, well, that's, not, that's not what happens. You get great value with sheet horses. They're eight to one morning line. They go out to 12 to one. They just never win. <laughs> but there is value every no, day. But no, but, but here's here's the here's problem. the thing. Here's the thing, Mike. And I think about that a lot, you know. And and every time I and I see that sometimes I see, and we talk about this, like Steve and I look like this is 21, but it looks great. He's gonna end up being nine to five, right? And sometimes it is, you know, right. but but well, sometimes not, yeah. we think that, and then well, literally like a 15 to one shot, we think is gonna go up nine to one, goes off like 70 to one. I mean, like you it know happens what? sometimes. And, 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 and it's and, my it's yeah, it's my environment and perspective when I'm playing contests and you're in with 400 people and 120 of them have the sheets and you think right. you landed on a 15 to one and everybody in the fucking contest has, you know, the horse and it goes off at, uh, you know, six to one. That that That's probably more. They're not very conducive anymore. I'll leave it here to playing large format contests because too many people have the information. All right, Mike, uh, why don't you start off with uh, with 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 uh, with race nine with uh, race nine, which is the. Uh... <laughs> Which is the junior? My favorite, my favorite trainer, my big buddy Bob Baffert, um, has. Oh uh, well, what? Well, give give a little, give a little, give a little context. Right, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, your I'm gonna give a, Go ahead. I'll give a thirty second uh, context to my sarcasm. So when Mandaloon lost the Derby, I got it was what two years ago maybe, or um, I had I was live to Mandaloon and all kind of stuff, eighty hundred thousand, which for me is a is is a, is a you know top five life score. Um, on mutual wise. And then when he tested positive for drugs, I just got so angry that I filed a federal class action lawsuit against Bob Baffert 
under the RICO statute for a pattern and practice of committing fraud, um, which the suit is still, it's still active. We're wow. just waiting on the federal. So, so we have cl a class of like 200. It has not been certified, but we're waiting on the federal judge in New Jersey to, to rule on Bob, uh, Bob Baffert's motion to dismiss the lawsuit um, because there's no app app applicable law. It's been in, in the, in under consideration for quite a while. Um, but I was just tired of not, I was tired of getting screwed out of payoffs the year before with tis the law um, by Bob Baffert and his cheating and drugs. And so I just took it upon myself to do wow. that. And that's, that's where we are. You, so guys can feel free to, you guys can feel free to Google it. This is no joke. This is a legit <laughs> thing. And, 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 and I, I'm, I'm in there. I'm rooting. I'm rooting. Yeah. I can't, I, right. cause I, cause let me tell you something. I, I got some freaking horses at Jefferson Downs that I need to get some refunds on back from 1991. So if I get totally some precedent, <laughs> so if I get some precedent, I'm going to go back and, and figure out why Eddie Martin sniffed on Foley in the ninth race at Jefferson Downs at 10 o'clock at night back when I cut my, uh, my cut class at law school to bet on him uh, in it's with $200 pool. All right. Um, why don't okay. we, why don't, why don't you start with race nine uh, in your Bob Baffert? Okay. So, I mean, he, he, he's tip, this is a typical cave rock four to five morning line. Um, typical Bob Baffert two-year-old has won three in a row by open lengths against, you know, relatively soft fields in California. Um, but he's going to be the favorite. He's going to go to the front and they're just going to have to run him down. I don't know what he looks like on the sheets. I'm sure he's very fast. I don't know what the pattern looks like, but I'm, you know, I'm just not a four to five kind of guy. So I'm against him. And the horse that I really like uh, is his other horse, National Treasure, who chased him last time uh, going long. And I really think he's going to improve. And, you know, at a nice price, maybe five or six to one, possibly, I think he's playable. And then the other horse, I like another couple of horses, I like verifying a little bit and blazing seven. So I think is really getting good and should like the extra distance here too. So, but look, I don't know what cave rock looks like. He's probably, you know, running minus numbers. Um, it's just very hard for two-year-olds to run this fast four times in a row. So that's kind of what I'm booking on here. Steve, why don't you go next? I agree with almost everything. Um, Cave Rock is marginally the fastest horse. It, oddly enough, his three races are identical. And it's a very odd looking line. It's three damn good races, but I've never seen anything like it. I think it's a five horse race. I don't have too much opinions between them. And um, one of them is the three Cave Rock. One is the four Forte, the five Verifying, the six Blazing Sevens, and the 10 National Treasure. These five just look inseparable to me. They just have, we just don't have a lot of information. They just have two or three races each. It's very hard to see where they're going to go today. I like those five equally. And I think what makes sense is to box the three longest, uh, the five verifying, uh, the, um, which one, the six blazing sevens and the 10 national treasures. So I think those three offer good value. Maybe they are the best three out of those five. I don't know. You can make a case for any of them, but those three I think are individually good value. And so I would use those guys and, pick threes and doubles and stuff and then box them in the exactus. So, so part of, so part so part of what keeps these 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 things nice and pure is that Steve and I literally have not talked about especially this card like at all. Um and so I will just show you what, what I what I what, what I, you won't be able to see because of my, my background. So what I have is five six ten value, right? Box five six ten to beat the three and the four. Okay. I, I we're exactly on the same page and and i'm on the same page as you michael so we'll we'll all listen we'll all go after baffert together but listen we're gonna have to be okay with him being in the winner's circle anyway like you were saying you know yeah, like, one in five chance of winning it or but the, either way. but you know forte is not so horrible to toss you could use him he, he is everyone is this horse is so short that i would toss it maybe for but maybe. but i mean when national treasure comes in at twenty dollars we'll be happy about it we'll be happy for baffert for just a couple of minutes I and then we can go back to hating him after. No, no, we'll be happy, but we won't be happy for back. Very, very nice. Okay. okay. Uh, Look, I, I just want to, I want to say if anybody, who, whoever watches this, you just got a three-way exact a box, coal, five, six, ten, from three relatively smart horse racing people. Why? Other, so, why other people except for us like them? I, I, who are those people? <laughs> no. <laughs> oh, oh, you mean us. Okay. Yeah, us, yeah. Five, six, ten. Let's hope we hit Hold that. On. So let me see. Three, four, cold exacta. 
Yeah, exactly. I'm putting that in right now. All right, <laughs> in good. Uh, okay, uh, race ten. Any, 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 any? You want to take this one? God, I'll, I'll make you do it, Steve. Yeah, you do, you do race ten. This is, you know, same shit, different race. Except this race <laughs> does seem to have a few more that are tosses. Okay. It's a little more consolidated. Uh, I think the value is a little more clear. There's there's some value in this. No strong opinion again. It's the two year olds. We don't really know what they're gonna do. I think the nine Nagarok at twenty to one is probably the best value. I this when I first looked at the sheets, I was like, oh, they all look the same, but this one's a little better, huh? And I was like, twenty to one. Wow. And the other one that maybe is a little better, uh, Major Dude, the 13, 10 to 1, I think is a little, eh, I'd like it to be longer. It's Pletcher and Ortiz, but it's on the outside. But those are the two that stood out. I mean, as far as the numbers, and these horses are all running the same numbers. Uh, those are the two whose patterns stopped, uh, stood out. But there's so many long shots in this race. The 12 Mostache, the 11 Reckoning. There's even a 30 to 1 shot. There's a couple of them. The, the 7 really good at 30 to 1. The one and the two were, eh, thought they were longer. Um, really, uh, really, there's a lot of different ways to go. Um, favorite, the favorite, actual favorite, um, what's it, Silver Knot? Was that, was that Silver Knot? Yeah, no idea why this is the favorite. This is not even in the top two tiers for me of all the competitive <laughs> in this race. That one's very marginal. I think that's a toss. But besides that, the second choice, third choice, you know, the, the odds aren't so far off in this race. But the best value is the... Is, is betting against the four silver knot, taking the nine Nagarok, and throwing in the uh, 13 major dude. But really, any 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 long shot beside the three and the five, maybe I could see has a shot. Well, this race, as, we, as, as Steve and I like to say, this race gives, gives me a headache. Um, yeah. I, I, I'm not participating. Um, so I will, uh, I'll, I'll see if maybe Michael can give me some insight as to how often uh, Europeans win this race for uh, to figure out whether cool. silver knot's a good yeah, player. How's that race going to set up? How was that last race heated contention? I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna give you a stat here because you asked for it. Yeah. The trainer on Silver Knot is six out of eleven at the Breeders' Cup small sample, okay. and in North America over the last two years, he's thirteen out of twenty-five small sample. Okay, Silver Knot's my probably my best play of the of the Breeders' Cup on Friday. Wow. Um, he's been pointed to this race. He likes the harder ground. He's just better i mean if you look at his race if you watch that sheet you need to go back to watching replays but if you watch his october 8th replay i mean he's dropping 10 pounds which is significant to me um and you know the trainer he he he, he won three last year i think three on the turf this horse is just better than all of these horses i mean as i think so, you know these are just all you can throw a blanket over them most of them, except for this one. And I think this is this is my single in all the multis. Um, the horse I'll use underneath will be two packs of wallet, but he won't have any. I won't use him at all um, in the in the win hole. So Silver Knot is my best player of the day. I, I will root for you. How about that? And look, I'm probably not betting him if he's, which he probably will be like nine to five or something like that. But, I, you know, I'm single in here. And if he loses, I'm, I'm out. So. Well, if he loses, I mean, listen, we'll be out long before that. I mean, like, <laughs> we'll be out long before that race, that's for sure. Um, okay, so let's move on to Saturday. So first race that we're going to talk about is race three, which is the Philly and Mare Sprint. Um, I I guess I'll, I'll, I'll start with this one. So I, I want to have a little bit of an opinion, if we could, on, on this race, the next race, and the race after, because we're going to – Steve and I are going to get to a race in race six that we really want to – have some exposure to. So one of the good things you do betting wise, is even if you don't like something in a particular race, if you know that you want to hook them up with something later, you can give yourself a little more, a little more leeway with finding value where if it was just like kind of a standalone race, I, I wouldn't really participate, but I'll just like, I'll start. I, I have just five horses that I'm just going to use here. And that's going to be the four uh, CC, the five Frank's Raquette, the seven obligatory, the eight, Good night, Dave. Even though it's not the great, good night, all of you. That's not the greatest price, but again, just I want to be alive. And then the twelve, I think, is de is decent enough. The lady at lady lady rocket at whatever his price is or her price, ten to one. So it's not that I like this race in particular, but I think if you if you use those, you get yourself in a good situation to make yourself live for stuff that's coming up later. So that's I guess that's my my opinion. Steve, did you take a look at this at this race? Yeah, yeah, I agree with you. Exactly what you're saying. Exact same horses, exactly the same. Okay. Don't get too involved, but they're using the exotics. Those are the exact ones. 
Um, so I would just add a tiny bit that the, the two longer ones, seven obligatory and 12 lady rocket would be the ones to play around with if they're long, but that's, I'm just reading the toe, but exactly, exactly what Eric said. What do you got, Mike? So, I, I mean, I'm not looking to play favorites here because I think it's very contentious. I will say I'll add one to your group and that's the one slammed um, has the favorable rail, which is in these sprints at Keeneland is, is, you know, a little bit of an edge. Um, should be able to get a position, if not the lead, um, and will be, you know, very, very long. I'll, so I'll throw that into yours. The other thing I'll say is the last race between Goodnight Olive and uh, Obligatory, it was a very, this is another, you know, angle or whatever you want to call it. The track at Saratoga that day was favoring early speed, which completely takes Obligatory out of her game. So you know, I would probably rate both of those horses, obligatory and Goodnight Olive, is like roughly equal. And because of the price, I'm going to be upgrading obligatory because I think she, she, she might, she might get what she needs here, which is a really hot early pace duel, and that's what she needs to run horses down. And it, you know, maybe she's ten to one. That's that's a chance I'll take um, at ten to one. So that I would go obligatory probably on top, and I'd use Olive and Slammed as my underneaths. All right, let's move ahead to race four. And Mike, you could uh, continue. You could start off uh, do like a snake draft. So start. So you could start off with the uh, turf sprint, grade one. Uh, what do you got here in race four? Okay, so this is the only uh, – the last time they ran this race at Keeneland, uh, a European shipper did win this race, Glass Slippers. So here you have a horse that's trying to win this race back-to-back, -back, Golden Pal. A little bit older this year. Races have been a little underwhelming to me. Um, I think this is a, a, a favorite you can take on. Um, and, I, and the horse I think I'm going to take him on with is the other Ward horse, uh, which is Campanelle, who um, I just think is going to be a better price. And probably at this point in their careers, she's probably a little bit better um, or she's moving towards a better effort than Golden Pal because Golden Pal is going to take some pressure on the front. Um, if there's an, if there's an overseas Philly, I'm, I think high field princess has a lot of quality. Um, and so that would be the, the European I would use with these. Um, but I'm really not interested at any price under four to one on, on her. And I think she probably will get bet down. Steve, what do you like here? I think that, um, you know, the favorite is, uh, golden pal, I mean, is the right favorite. The favorite, this favorite kind of lays over the field if he shows up. I would bet against him. I mean, I would use him in the pick six. It's just one of those horses that's annoying to have in a race because he's probably the right favorite, but he's just erratic enough where you can easily bet against him. So I guess let's toss him. And uh, the tier I like best in this race, I think the best value is the seven Arrest Me Red. And that's Wesley Ward, huh? Mm. Uh, yeah, Another I think that horse Ward. Yeah. really looks good to pop. Um, I think that uh, the other horse, Casa Creed, is only six to one, but that's probably one of the high, one of the more likely winners. And I really like this brand, the 12, that uh, 15 to one. Those three, I think, are the value of the race, and two of them are 15 to one. And then there's a whole tier of secondary horses I would use, like the 15 Dancing Buck, the 14 Artemis, the... Um, the uh, four, uh, seven, is it Campanelle? The 10, Caravel. Sorry, the 10, Caravel. And then I do also think the um, the four, Campanelle is okay, but at eight to one, a little too short. I don't like the Highland Princess horse six. I think that at seven to two, I think that's a bad um, second choice. I would look to beat that. I would look to beat both favorites. And Casa Creed is the third choice, six to one. That's kind of like the, the right price marginal. But the ones I talked about longer than that are probably where the value is in this race. And seven, Arrest Me Red. 12 brand probably uh, leading the way for value for me. I agree with Steve. I think that the seven and the 12 are, are you know, the, the real big value here. Um, uh, Recipe red and brand. And I agree that the 11 is probably next best value, although it's six to one, it's not, you know, no great shakes. And the, uh, the eight. Uh, yeah. I mean, if, I, I want to have it because I want to be live to other stuff. I would never bet golden pal in and of himself. I wouldn't, you know what I mean? I wouldn't key him or anything like that, but just to, just to be alive, I would use him, but but clearly uh, those are those are the values as well for me. Uh, seven seven and twelve and uh, eleven as well. I, yeah, uh, I'll just say yeah. I'll add this sheets real quick. So this is a race. Two things. One, 
value and price is key in, in a you know a race like that because first of all trips in a in a sprint are are key and you don't know who's going to get one so you better you better take some value with your horse so if if Campanelle shows up and you know they they're betting they are betting him down to four to one five to one I'm probably not interested at all and then I'm gonna go to the other ward the other other ward which is a rest me red because that means that that horse might be twenty to one which is you know, that would be incredible value. I mean, I would make a recipe red probably 10 to one, eight to one. And if I'm somebody's going to give me 15, 20, I'm taking it all day. So what I wrote down, we're going to move ahead now to the fifth race. And thankfully they changed. Oh, they didn't change. I was about to say that they used to call this the big ass fans mile and they, finally <laughs> it, but they actually didn't get rid of it. Now I'm looking at it for the first time. They're still calling it the big ass fans breeders cup dirt mile. So I actually have some stuff written down here, and I, I really didn't look at this race a second time after. I just kind of wrote this down and figure whatever. So I'll just share what I have here. What I have here is I have two, three, four, and ten to beat the seven and the nine. So let me just kind of look at that means. So I have simplification at fifteen to one, pipeline, and then law professor at twenty to one, and then senior buscador at twelve to one, and then I have the seven and the nine in there. I guess. I guess a seven and nine probably looked pretty good, but I really thought those others were good values. I'll probably end up using all of them to some degree, but um, I'll go to Steve. Steve, do, you, do, do those horses have any value? Did you look at this race more than Yeah, I, I look a little differently than you. Okay. Um, the favorite Cody's wish, it, it's it's really going to win. It's probably going to win, yeah. but again, I'm just going to toss it. But it's real. they really have the right favorite. There's nothing I can say okay. bad about Cody's wish, except it's a horse race. And uh, But it looks, like the, it looks like the best horse. It looks like it's going to win but not by that much, I think, to justify its price. I'm kind of in love with the nine Cyber Knife. Okay. I kind of think Cyber Knife really looks great. And nine to two isn't, I haven't really talked about horses that short yet, but I actually think at nine to two, this is value. And I think that this horse, you know, is just a touch below Cody, but the the value is, uh, especially since he's not even the second choice. Um, I think this is great value, third or fourth choice in the race Cyber Knife. And there are the long shots you mentioned I, I would use with, I mean, it's, it's tough to throw out Cody, but there is a lot of return if you're, if it turns out he gets hung wide or something. And um, the law, the ones you liked, I wasn't too high on the two simplification, but the 15 to one, I'm not going to complain. It's a three-year-old, but the three pipeline, a little too short at eight to one. Yeah. The three pipeline looks great. The four law professor at 20 to one. And especially that uh, senior buscador, the 10, uh, looks fantastic. So from a betting standpoint, I would key cyber knife the nine with the three pipeline four law professor, professor 10 senior buscador, maybe toss in the two simplification if you think Eric's going to hit it. And um, yeah, but not not such a huge opinion. I don't know, maybe senior buscador, I'm looking at him at 12 to one, maybe this is a hell of a 12 to one shot. What do you got, Mike? All right, I want to ask you guys, so, so, so what are you going to do? Because I think the morning line guy really I don't think he got this right at all. Um, I mean, I think the favorite is going to be either Cyberknife or Laurel River. So, and I think it's going to be close. So I don't think you'll get nine to two on Cyberknife uh, Saturday. Uh, I don't think you'll get, what is it, nine to two on Laurel River. I think they'll both be, you know, five to two, three to one. And to me, then that means Cody's wish might be four to one. So that's the kind of scenario of Cody's wish is four to one, I'm all in. Um, because I think he kind of lays over. Um, I think I'm right there. If I'm wrong, then 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 I'm not taking Cody's wish at you know two to one or five to two. But he he sure looks very very good to me. And uh, I just think they're going to bet those other two. And I, I don't. I think Cody's wish is just better than them. Yeah, I would almost single him. If I knew he was four to one, I would I would make him a heavy heavy high percentage of my play on this. Mike, uh, I mean you have a you have a, you have a Brad Cox and a Bob Baffert. You know, and, and and I just know the betting patterns. I mean, they just – the public just goes there. You know, they just go there, and they're going to go there on those two, I think. Mike, race six, the Breeders' Cup Philly and Mare Turf. I'm going to let you start with this one, then we'll go to Steve. Race six. Okay. Uh, okay, here's another stat for you. A European or a horse trained by Chad Brown has won the last 10 of this one. Oh, F Trad, F, F Trad Brown, really. I mean, seriously. <laughs> <laughs> Not the freaking chat Go okay. ahead. All right. He does have a horse domestic abuse. I mean, spending in today. Um, so um, I think I, I like a horse. Is that like a Chad Brown joke there? Is, is he like a white beater or something? 
Yeah, I'm sorry. That that's an that wasn't an insight. He was arrested for domestic abuse in Saratoga. Over the I'm summer. glad I noticed that. That was great. Thank you. I, but but uh, I didn't even but, know about but, that. But, but I knew I knew but the way there's you said more, it, there had to be something there. There's more to the story. Okay. Um, I really like this horse Tuesday in here. Um, I think she wants um, firmer ground, which she's going to get. She doesn't like soft ground, which she got the last two times. It's Aiden O'Brien, Ryan Moore, who's probably the best jockey in the world. And I, I'm, I'm thinking they're just they're, – they had pointed to this race. And I know a couple of them in here have, have beaten her, but she just didn't get her trip last time. And I, I really, really – at the price, 8-1, to one, I, I really like this horse a lot. The other one that is just totally a visual play, because I don't know what – I've heard that she doesn't look very good on the sheets, but is the 12 Moira. And when I saw her race um, on August 21st, I think the Queen's Plate might have been – I was just like, all right, this is the winner of whatever race she runs in at the Breeders' Cup, period. And then she came back and she tried turf for the first time going long. Um, and she just got a tough, tough trip and she almost won. And I, I just, she's just, she's just visually very pleasing to the eyes when she runs and her moves are just, you know, other horses just don't move like the way she moves on turns. And so she's going to be in my business, but I really like here, if I can hit this eight, whatever it is, Tuesday with Moira, I'm going to have a winning day. All right, Steve, why don't you talk about this race? Uh, I'll, I'll start by saying Moira, her race on dirt before that turf one is better than any three-year-old Colt that's in the classic today. Mm. She's not going to be one of my top picks here because that's on dirt, but I'm at <laughs> track. Uh, is probably certainly the at worst the second worst number by any filly or mare this year. Anyway, so this is a race where Eric and I ha probably have the most opinion. This is our bet of the day, our best race, and this is the one that makes our heart stop and say, "God, we really are going to lose a lot on this race, aren't we?" And it is the one, Lady Spite Spear. I don't even know how to pronounce her, Lady Spite Spear. Um, she is. Uh, this race, uh, unique to what we've been saying so far to us, has many horses that have no shot at all. There's a very, very short field of horses that even have a chance to us. And there's a few tiers to it. And the top tier, I think, all by herself is Lady Spite Spear at 20 to 1, making her probably the bet of the Breeders' Cup, the bet of the day, best bet we've seen in the last at least 12 hours. So, but she is, she is, a, <laughs> she is, she is a bonus. She is the shit. From start to finish, her first year, her first, her first race as a two-year-old is about what your horse Tuesday is running now as a three-year-old heading to the Breeders' Cup. She is just fast as shit. So she's the top tier here. My second uh, tier, who I also will use, I'm not going to single her in the pick six or anything, but um, the second tier, but down a notch, is the eight family way at 20 to 1. This race is just a phenomenal race. There's a lot of ways you're going to lose money in this race, or at least we are. All kinds of exactus, tries, superfectus. And the 11 in Italian, Chad Brown. Those two in Italian and Family Away are my second and third horses. In Italian is the second choice, but because there's so much value around it, I don't care at all. So in exactus and stuff, I'm not going to toss in Italian. The favorite, Nashua, is a mystery why this is a favorite. The only two, the only horses I would use besides that group, that three is probably it for us, but there is a subtle under tier, including 12 Moira, whose turf race wasn't that great, but the reality is she's so dominating that even if she moves forward a little bit, she could really, you know, she, like, if she wins by seven, I wouldn't be shocked, but also if she right. doesn't get a horse, I, I'm not going to be shocked either. Um, and do you then think we, she has like? Do you think she has like a forward move in her though? I don't. I mean, I'm just on the sheets. Is it possible? She is. She's she's hard for two reasons. The turf. She ran a bad race on the turf last time, but it's 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 just one race. And after that dirt race before it, she was going to run a bad race no matter what. So I can't really. It doesn't look. It looks a little ugly that she reacted so bad from that race. But on the other hand, it's normal. The thing is, she does. She ran a huge, huge race two races ago, but doesn't have a lot of. She does have support actually. Yeah, I mean, from day one, she's been a strong horse. If this was dirt, I I would seriously use her in the Breeders' Cup Classic today. I'm not kidding. But the, so the turf is really the question mark here, and I just I don't know. I just don't know. It's just to us, we just we just don't have any information on that. Is she going to run on turf or not? Statistically, she shouldn't. 
you know, and, just, and, and the rest of your bottom two, you were going to say Rugier, right? And okay, sorry, Rugier and um, what is the other one? There was yeah. nine and the 12. Right? Two. Those are the bottom two. Yep. And that's it. All right. So, so first of all, I'll go backwards. First of all, one of, one of the things that Moira could encounter as will the 11 is, you know, listen, you know, we, we, although we are focused on the numbers, we are cognizant of what can happen when you lose ground. Right. So, so, so if you had, you have the 11 and the 12 hole in a race that you're, is going two turns, it's, you're going to have to just overcome a lot to, 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 to do better. So what happens with a horse like Moira Unless you think it's going to get some trip, what ends up happening? This is like more sheet theory than anything like that else. Is it could run a, a number that looks good on the sheet that doesn't look quite as good on the track because it's got to cover that much more distance of ground. Uh, nonetheless, uh, yeah, I mean, where, where I said that Steve and I didn't talk about the races for Friday, we have talked about these races. So uh, yeah, I, I second everything that he said. I think Lady Shakespeare is is the uh, is the bet of the of the weekend um, to say the least, mm. um, and. And, and the Family Way horse, Family Way has one of these lines that Steve and I kind of like differ on sometimes. I mean, it's got like a bunch of races that kind of have no chance. And then it's got a race that was a couple back when it ran the eight or something. Yeah, exactly. And then, and so so if, if if you believe that eight, then it's a perfect line leading into this race. But if you think that eight is just some random nonsense where the sheets people are just kind of hallucinating, then the horse has no chance, you know? So, 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 but, but at 20 to one, I'm willing to find out. Let's put it that way. Um, so, so I agree completely, like the one on top and the eight, like really close behind. And I think the 11 is perfectly reasonable and, and, and at seven to two, obviously it's not as good as these others. And then the 12 and the nine. And so, you know, if you lost all your money on all of our picks on, on Friday and then just lost everything, whatever, just don't, don't give up on us yet. Cause we can lose you a lot more, you know, like in, in this race. So, so we, we both agree on this one and this is going to be, a. Uh, this is going to be really key for us. I'll just I'll put it to you guys another way, right? If you guys put like $20 or, or $2, like on a box of like one, eight, I mean, that's going to pay like 800, you know what I mean? Like to like, like based on $2. So what, what's, what's, what's $2, you know what I mean? So, so uh, uh, that, that we're, we're both in complete agreement with that. And, um, and that's, that's where we are. All right. So let's, uh, let's, let's move on to race number seven. I guess I will start with this one. Um, so this is, I was thinking about this when you were talking about the golden pal, or whatever, some of these horses that when you start just know are really fast and you kind of want to bet against them, but then like, ugh, it's just, it's just going to freaking win. And I feel that way kind of about Jackie's warrior. I, I really would kind of love to beat this thing. Um, it's probably going to end up winning, but, but I don't care. So, so I, I like a couple of things here, uh, to, I don't know, say to beat. Yeah, sure. Why not? I like, um, the two. Kimari, but that's that's no fun, right? At four to one. Uh American Theorem looks pretty good at 10 to 1. Then Elite Power, it's either the most likely winner, right? Or or just like or just like another horse, like if, if Jackie's Warrior shows up. And then if you listen, if you're really on tilt because we lost all your money in race six when that European horse won or something like that, and you really just need to do something really just long, you can play Flash of Mischief at 30 to 1 and you will. I will have given you worse 30 to one shots than this one. I'll, I'll just say that. So that's my opinion on this race. Steve, you want to take it from there? Yeah. Um, this is a, this is a, my, my feelings have been very schizophrenic on this race for a while. And um, I have, I could answer this in five different ways for the pick six. I think it's um, I think the same thing, the favorite Jackie's warrior is probably going to win, but we're six. So we're going to throw them out and bet them. We're not going to throw them out in the pick six. Right. So the pick six, the four horses that I think are going to win, are two Kamari, four American Theorem, um, the favorite Jackie's Warrior, and, the six. and Elite Power, the six. And I just, I have different feelings on this race. Sometimes I think that's just it, don't bet the race. But really, I think there are times when I look at this race and say, you know what? Elite Power is a damn good six to one shot. Like he, he really, I don't know. There's a part of me that sees him coming in last, but he may, maybe he's the real thing. He's, he really has like a line. He's got a fast race. I think Elite Power is a decent, sneaky six to one shot. American Theorem is 10 to one. And I, I just think you have to use it at the price, but I just don't like it. I don't think it looks good. And the Philly Kamari, I'm putting her in the pick six, but I just think she looks horrible. Like, I think she's a total toss. I think it's a waste of money to use her, but I'm going to anyway. The American Theorem, I'm going to waste money because it's 10 to one. The Jackie's Warrior is going to end up paying 360, and Elite Power is probably the bet. 
And then there's a part of me that looks at this and says it's going to completely break down and every one of these horses has a race not, has a reason not to show up. And they kind of do. That's the thing is that there's a little volatility with these four and they, none of them could decide to show up. And there's um, the three Obesos at 20 to 1 and the five Alo Aloha West at 12 to 1 and that damn flash of mischief at 30 to 1. So I just, this is just, I'm confused about this race and I'm not sure. Maybe my opinion should just be elite power at 6 to 1 is great value and whatever but anyway that's it what do you got mike yeah i mean look if you can get past jackie's warrior and and uh he ran this race last year and was one to two and ran six um i think i think he's going to take a lot of pressure again early i don't think this horse likes a lot of pressure and it, these six furlong races just seem in the british cup sprinter just seem so chaotic so i mean if we could get i think elite power is for real um, he's kind of a late developing horse. Um, and I, I just think a price of six to one or higher is the easy, is the easy play. I mean, am I going to use Jackie's warrior in my pick six or pick five? Sure. But I'm not going to go very, I don't really think I'm going very deep. I'll probably just go elite power in Jackie's warrior, um, and hope for the best. I mean, I don't know that there's a lot of early speed in here to, to threaten Jackie's warrior, but it's a sprint. I mean, so you got to believe that like the seven is going to, and who is just cheap is going to try to get out inside of Jackie's warrior. So it just always happens. Somebody just pops, you know, and Jackie's warrior does not like that at all. Um, and that, but could be just a, you know, like you said, could pay three to five and we'd be shaking our heads, but if someone's going to beat him, I think it's elite power. All right, Mike, I need you to help me race eight. So I'm going to let you start. You tell, tell, tell uh, me, tell me, tell me, I want you to tell me who's going to win race eight. Who's gonna? I, 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 um, who's gonna win race eight? Well, yeah, easy question, right? Who's gonna win? That's I think Annapolis. Get. I think Annapolis is gonna win. Um, I think Annapolis is gonna win. I'm gonna go against my my normal Euro bias, but I really think that this is a uh, special horse. Um, just watching his last race, three year old getting a little bit better. You know, he just seems. I mean, on just the figures I'm looking at, he's every race is improving. Um, he's getting a couple pounds of weight. He beat a couple of really nice horses, Order of Australia, who won this race a couple of years, Ibar, who's won a lot of money. I, I just, he just has a cruising speed and I think he's going to run the race of his life and the price of, you know, 10 to one, which we're not going to get anywhere near 10 to one, um, just is, is too much to pass up. I'll, I'll say one other thing though, before this horse domestic spending, Oh, that thing. Very, very, very good. But who, who would have been my pick if he had drawn better? 14 hole going at this distance at Keeneland is just right. god awful. And even though he's, I don't, it doesn't bother me that this horse hadn't run in, what is it, 500 a days or something? 14, a year and a half? 15 months. Yeah, it's a while. Doesn't bother me at all. Chad Brown is just, he's won three grade ones off layoffs like that. So, he, he know he, this horse is very, very good, very classy, but I do think the outside post is going to, going to do him in the, the one European. Um, I think modern games is going to be way, way, way over bet. The time to get him was last year. Um, I don't even know that I have another European horse, but I, I think Annapolis is all day, every day at, at 10 to one for me. All right. All right. I'm going to ask you a question. I'm going to, I'm going to access your, your knowledge here, Mike. Okay. So I, I don't know, no idea what these horses are. I have a question. Is it possible that the six Ivar can get to the lead and to the rail like really quickly, or is he not that kind of horse? No. Damn. Yeah. So, so that's all, that's all, that's, that's all I had. I had either but, Ivar listen, or listen, Total Wheel. Listen, Eric, this horse Annapolis that he likes, he said beat Ivar in the last race. Ivar ran a one better number. That the, the, that seven minus six minus on those two last right. numbers are him beating Ivar with a worse number. Well, that's because Ivar is probably on the outside, right? Domestic, he was wide. He was three the wide. wide, six wide, right? He was three wide, six wide. Ivar. So, so I mean, that's so, going to so, cost so, you. So, so I would, I would love. And look, to and look. Yeah. And we got 14 horses. I mean, it's going to be right. really hard for he, he runs from you know the middle I, of the pack. The back I was hoping. I was, I was just. I was just hoping because my because my. Because my my view of this race was that like literally all fourteen horses can win. That I thought that Modern Games looked like a great horse to bet at twenty five to one. 
You know, I, I mean, like when 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 Steve says he Steve said that horse looks like the best line. I looked at. I didn't know what the morning line were. I'm like, yeah, he looks he looks pretty good. And then I looked, saw seven to two. Oh, right, really? And then I'm like, it's gonna be a wheel. I guess Ivor is the best price. And and I was just hoping that you could give me some good news that maybe he would. Oh, that's good trail. news. He gave you good. That's good news. He's I guess I, I, I guess that's good news because the still the best bet I think in the history of this race was a horse that got to the rail right away, and that was Lure in the mile back like a hundred. Hundred years ago, whatever it was. Well, I mean, look, I don't know. Can he get to the rail? Um, I don't. That's going to be hard, you know. Right. But he's not. He's not going to the front. I think that's, okay. that's part of your. You know what? I mean, let, I mean, him go, let him go. Let him go to the front at the end. That's fine. I'll, I mean, as, look, long as, as long as he gets at the front at the end, right at the end of the race, yeah. then, then I'll then I'll be good. I just think it's going to have. Well, but I do think it'll set up because I think I um, the one has a tremendous amount of speed. Pogo, you got Ken Ross, the other European who's basically a sprinter into Tory? he's going to be going to the front. Domestic spending from the outside hole has to get early position, although he likes to come from behind. S smooth like straight only goes to the front. I mean, I just think there's going to be a lot of speed to set up a, a big run. So maybe he doesn't have to get to the rail. Maybe he's too off, you know? I mean, so, there's a lot of horses that want to go to the front, and he ain't one of them. So, 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 so Steve, you, any, anything new out of this race? I mean, we'll talk more in the next couple of days, but what do you, what do you got as a distance? So this race, I agree with Eric. It's the hardest race ever. Any horse can win. It's a crazy race on the sheets. It's just a mess. I mean, they all, but they, they all look good. Like you could make a positive case for any horse and we would be like, yeah, I can see it. Um, but I do have a little, I do have some interesting things. I, I did think that modern game, I did think that there was a tier and modern games was slightly in the better part of the tier, but now, yeah, just, you know, screw him. He's just, he has that one big race. It's not worth the price. I do think there's value, um, which is maybe stupid because it's kind of a wheel race. Um, Real glory at six to one, I think might be a little better, but it's just not worth it at that price. So I, I think that um, the, the one, the two that I really thought were value were Ivar uh, to, at 15 to one is just, he look, he does look a little bit better than the rest, but I don't, I wouldn't expect him to run. And another horse that's really interesting is Sheryl's spite, the two at 30 to one. And I've never seen anything like this on the sheets. And they're all, these horses are all running the same number, that, which is a fast number. Sheryl's spite. Um, is it the same name as spite spear that last 21? Oh, and there it is. And there you have it. That's why. <laughs> no, this horse, this horse in her first two races ran two incredible races. Her first two races in her life. Her second race was an incredibly fast race for any filly to run ever. But she ran this in the second race of her life. It's two years later now. And her last race just broke through that race, the second race of her life. And in sheet lore, that can be a big deal. Am I allowed to say this kind of thing? She, uh, you usually have sheet to lore. sit through... To hear what I just told you, you would normally have to sit through 13 hour and a half cassette tapes that talk about cassettes. I just saved you hours of horrible or anyway. Yeah. So Shrill Spite at 30 to 1, I think as far as screwing, screwing around is as good as any today. I think that horse has the in short, I mean, has the rail, he's lightly raised. He just did this incredible. Oh, it's a guy, Shrill. I don't know why I'm saying it was a girl. It's a male horse. It doesn't really matter. It broke through that second number, which is a huge number for a horse to run. And I think it looks okay. Um, and then I, I don't know why every time I look at this race and I see every horse running the same thing, I keep on stopping on Annapolis and saying, you know what? I kind of feel like Annapolis is the one horse. Let's go. All right. Sorry. <laughs> We're in. I love it. I love it. Let's go. Let's go. Uh, Steve, start, uh -huh. you start off with race nine, the, uh, the distaff. The distaff is a race that we don't care about. It's a bad race for us. They all look the same. If I had to pick one horse... You know, the, the one Malathot, the two Blue Stripe, who's 20 to one, the four Clarier, the six Nest, kind of not a great favorite, the seven Search Results, and the eight Society are all identical to us. They all look kind of the same. Nest is a little bad value, but you can't throw it out. Blue Stripe is a little good value at 20 to one, but it is the one that does look a little worse than the rest. Um, I would say the value in the race, if you have to come up with value, are the um, probably the, the bottom two. Um, search results and society. Um, and that's it. There's no real opinion. Agree. I would say that if you had to tier, um, and you don't, uh, I guess the seven and the eight would be my best, just like kind of overall value plus chance to win. But it's it's a race to spread or to pass. 
What do you got, Mike? No, I totally agree. I don't. I don't they, they seem to just kind of all take turns, you know, beating each other, um, depending on their moods. Um, I'm hoping to get a better price on the one whose turn it is, which I think it's Clarier's turn to win this race. So I don't think four to one is is bettable, but I, I, I'm optimistic that might get a little bit better price than four to one, and I'll land there. Um, I, I'm kind of against Nest. I mean, God, just I don't know why. I just I just don't think a three year old filly can keep running that well that and I don't, I don't know that she's running that fast but on sheets but she just I don't think she can repeat um I'm totally against society just got a complete setup in her last race the only like speed that. Totally got out against you know. society that's a great line that's going to come back someday to you. <laughs> that's right that's right that's right I am anti-society um that's pretty fun so so I don't really have a strong opinion I'll, I'm going to spread very deep but Claire will be the one I'll lean on just a little bit all right I'll start with race 10 um Race 10, I think there is some 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 value here. Um, I mean, I've had you know seven contenders or whatever, but but excuse me, I have like five, no, six contenders. Um, and I think the value is probably it the best value is probably the eight in masterpiece. Um uh, I do like these some other shorter ones. I like Warlike Goddess. Uh, I think he looks pretty decent. The other kind of short one I do like, I think Nation's Pride is obviously fine um but i think broom is really good at 12 to 1 i think stone age is a little worse but i think at 15 to 1 it's worth you know giving it a break and i think the 10 red knight is also good i will say this that if channel maker wins i'm jumping off a building yeah um <laughs> uh, i mean like that 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 is a horse that we've lost infinite money on over the years yeah you can see um, how many years in a row it's been in this race and you can, yeah yeah so, so that's what that's what I like in this race. Uh, again, depending, listen, it all depends on how much money you're up or down, right? So, if you if you're if you're down a lot, you just really just have to bet masterpiece, and that's like heavy duty analysis, right? So, so I, I definitely think masterpiece is 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 the best value. It's certainly not as good as like Lady Spikes Town from earlier or whatever, but at twenty to one, it's cer certainly good value. So that, that that's my view of this race. Uh, oh, let's go, uh, Mike. Mike, you go next. So I, I really, I'm interested to know what, because uh, I really like a horse in here. Um, I'm interested to know what Broom's figures were the two times he ran uh, this race. Steve, he, well, Steve he ran the Breeders' that. Cup. Yeah, like no, in November, he ran last, that was last year. Looked like a stone cold winner really? until Ebeer came and caught him, who I was on Ebeer. Um, and then he ran um, this summer Broom, at Saratoga. Broom's, Broom's last year race in the Breeders' Cup wins this race. Yeah, so that's what I'm going to. Because he almost has the same pattern. He ran in the arc. It was soft. He ran terrible. It was just a gimme. I mean, they're just giving this horse the arc, right, to run, to set him up for this race. And gets out Red Ortiz. He's going to be – I don't think he's going to be anywhere near 12. I think this horse will be 15, 20 to 1. And I think it's the best value play of the day. Um, and I will use the other um, – European, the Appleby Godolphin, Nation's Pride, who I think has a lot of quality and can also improve um, and has won over here the last two times. So those are my two. That's it. I'm two, two and done in this race. Broom is my best bet, bet of the day. Nice. And I'll use Na Nation's Pride underneath. What do you got, Steve? So um, I've gone through a lot of incarnations in this race. And um, I think that there's four clear best horses here. And I think there's little sub tiers within them. I think the most likely winner is the eight masterpiece. I think this is this is the second best value of the day to Lady Spitzen or whatever, but I don't think it's that much below it. I think they're almost equal in value. I think this is just a, I think this is the most likely winner of the race. It's 20 to one. I think it's fantastic. It's just a fantastic bet. And it's just uh, unfortunate that it, we have two great bets to lose so much money on in one day. Oh, so much. I know. It's not <laughs> the next horse, I think, um, the next tier actually, is um, the four Broom and the Seven Nations Bride. And I think Broom is just fantastic value, I agree. And it's just from the sheets. I don't care. I didn't even realize that he lost last year by whatever, even though I probably bet him. Um, I think that um, I think that Masterpiece is slightly better, but not really that much better than Broom and Nations Pride. And so I think the cue of Broom and uh, Masterpiece is the play here as far as value goes. Those two at the price, I think they're great. And then Warlike Goddess rounds out my four. I think she's a tiny bit below those three or 
Um, uh, she's probably, you know, but not much. So those four are like maybe the ones I would use in the pick six. I don't really like uh, slightly below that. I would put the one bye bye Melvin and the three Stone Age to use other two. Um, those to me are the only ones that, that have a chance, but they're just, you know, trying to compete for the trifecta. So this is one of my top plays. Steve, why don't you start us off with the Breeders' Cup Classic? The Breeders' Cup Classic. All right. So we have a, the next best horse ever in the world of history. And he is. His, uh, his numbers are unprecedented for a horse with only five starts. I actually uh, watched his races, and I haven't watched a, a replay in, that wasn't Zenyatta in, um, since Kelso was a pup. Is that a long time ago? Anyway, um, yeah, he's, a, he's an incredible horse. He dominates everyone. He's never been tested. Um, I would throw him out from a betting standpoint, of course. Um, I think that <laughs> uh, his last race was just phenomenal. It's one of the best numbers I've ever seen. And he coasted. What was, was, what, what was the number? Negative two. Negative two. That's, God, I would have thought he got more. That's not That's not a historic. I know. I, he won by 20. Right? I know. He won. I know. Right? Yeah. But the other guys must have oh. not showed up and run 12s and 10s. They must have ran 10s. Don't forget, when you have a long race, um, the number, like if you won by 20 lanes at six furlongs, that number would be a lot better, right? Numbers are, anyway. But yeah, he is, I I, I just, you know, it, it just doesn't look healthy to me. It just looks like he's too fast, too early. And I, I think he's probably the super horse of all time, but I would bet against him today. And I think he's going to bounce and I think he's going to go backwards. Can he bounce and still win the race by six? Sure. But I hate betting horses at all that I know are going to bounce or go backwards. So just on the principle that he's going to go backwards, and there are some good horses that aren't that far behind him, maybe only nine lanes or something. <laughs> at that, right? Um, and I think the next logical horse here is the uh, two life is good. Just your standard horse that we see in Breeders' Cup Classics year after year, getting faster all the time. Uh, he had two great races. Did he win this race last year? No, he won the mile. Um, he just looks, he had, you know, I don't love him so much. Like I could see him bouncing and throwing a bad race, but he's got a great shot at running a huge race or at least a very, very good race. And um, if, if you know, the, the favorite has a negative two, life is good, could certainly run a zero or a one today. And I think that's enough to win. So I think he's great value at, at um, six to one. I think that... Um, Olympiad, Epicenter, and Hot Rod Charlie could throw in a bad race. They all look, I mean, throw in a big race. They all look good, but they just have a little less of a chance. And I think Taiba's in that group, but I think Taiba is more of a standout. Taiba is my next choice because with the rail and the weight, Taiba just is a Taiba just looks fantastic. It's a lightly raced horse. He's not as fast as the as the um, Life Is Good and the favorite, but he looks ready to pop. He's a three year old. And I think that um, anyway, I would I would try. I mean, I'm not going to throw flight line out of the pick six, but I would definitely try to beat it with Taiba and Life is Good. I don't think this is an unbeatable favorite at all, and I think there's a lot of value in beating it. I agree. So 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 flight line I think is clearly the most likely winner. Um, and and I have him probably about sixty, you know, fifty five, sixty percent to win. Um, the problem is he's going to be one to five. Okay, he's not going to be three to five. He's going to be one to five. Okay, everybody's gonna want tickets off. All right. Um, and even if he's one to two or whatever, um, life is good looks really, really nice on the sheets. Um, and and Tybal looks really, really nice on the sheets as well. If you were starting your betting with this race, whatever, I, the, I I I agree from a betting perspective that all the value is with the one and the two. If you're betting the, if you're betting the pick sixes, again, like I don't want to be like not alive. I don't want flight line to win after say. The, the, the big long shot in the, in the last race and the one in leg two comes in and I'm sitting there not cashing for a million three when, when flight line comes in, you know, as opposed to when these other guys come, we were less likely to win. But uh, certainly I think that if you ran this race, you know, to infinitum, that you'd make more money betting on the one and the two than you would on the four. If you ask me who's going to win the race, I will say the four. But, but I, I definitely agree with Steve uh, from a betting perspective that the one and the two are better values. What do you think, Mike? Yeah, I mean, he's he, he looks like, I mean, flight line, the most likely winner. What's going to happen, though, is he's going to get some serious pressure. Oh, let's early go. Early okay. From the two, because okay. the two is going to the front. Period. And the one is going to be behind line, him? The, 
flight line has broke. He breaks slow. So he's not going to have the lead. So, you know, that, that's going to be something new that he has to deal with. Um, he's coming off a top. Um, life is good. I don't think he's going to be able to run with flight line and then continue on and win the race. It's just going to be too much. Yeah. I, I, I mean, unfortunately, my good buddy, Bob Baffert, I think he's going to, this horse is going to be sitting tight by the one in just the garden spot. I mean, just perfectly positioned. He's got, he's a three-year-old. He can improve. He's, you know, he just, an eight to one, t- I think you're going to get 10 to one. I mean, cause I, I think, I think flight line will be like one to five, as you said. Um, the other horse that I will use though is hot ride Charlie. And that's my building jump horse because last year I was live to 80,000 in the classic with hot rod. And at the top of the stretch, I would not have changed horses. I would have doubled down on Hot Ride Charlie when they turned for home against Nick's go. And he just flattened late. And if he wins, I'm, I'm not going to go jump off a building. I'm not having him somewhere. So those are my – look, I think Flightline is beatable here. Is he the most likely winner? Well, yeah, of course. But he's definitely going to get his toughest um, – his toughest race um, of his career. And if he's good enough, he's good enough, but he's, but he's going to have to prove it to me. The fact that I was able to get this done with still four minutes to spare is one of my greatest accomplishments in all of my <laughs> career, but I, we only have two minutes. So I was just going to review. We'll each give our, our best, like overall uh, bets of the day. I think Steve and I are on the same page. I'll let Steve uh, re- recap ours. Then we'll, we'll, we'll give Mike a couple of, a couple of seconds. Also, Steve, who do, who are, recapping the best values of the day. The best values of the day for us are in the reg race six on Saturday, the one lady spite spear, uh, using it with the eight family way and the 11 in Italian. And then in on Saturday, race nine, or race 10, the turf, the eight masterpiece and the four broom using with the two warlike goddess and the seven nations pride. And then screwing around in the classic with the one Taiba like this good. That's not one of our best. What would, what is our next best? That was it. That was pretty much it. That's it. What do you got, uh, my couple a couple things to pass along? I think the, the the my best bet, the most likely winner of the weekend is Silver Knot in the Breeders' Cup Juvie Turf. That's Friday. And then if you wanted to parlay that to, um, is that Friday or is that Saturday? That's Friday. Silver Knot. That's, That's Friday. Friday. Um, I would parlay that to uh, broom in the Breeders' Cup turf. And if, you, if you're going to hit, if you hit that, that'll pay quite a bit. So I think the biggest value is probably broom. And the, and the most likely winner is uh, Silver Knot. Hey, guys, thank you so much. This was awesome. I'll put this up there. And for those of you, again, check, check out Better Takes, uh, m.bettertakes.com. It'll kind of show you what to do to like to access that to that tool. We'll talk more about that some other time. You can look at my my YouTube video channel to see our full breakdown of that of that of that product. And uh, let's get it done. Thank you so much, guys. And uh, I'll put this up shortly. Yeah, thanks a lot. Eric. Thanks, Shades. Okay, see you later.